off uh, we're live. All right. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, we're here in sunny Barranquilla, Colombia. Uh, we're so happy that you came today. Um, my name is Katie, and this is Miguel. Nice to meet you all. Um, so today we're going to be talking about improving listening and speaking with free online tools. So thanks again for joining us. Um, so yeah, I'm Katie Bain, and I'm the English Language Fellow here in Barranquilla, Colombia. And I have the pleasure of working at the Binational Center um, here. It's called Centro Cultural Colombo Americano de Barranquilla. And I also get to work with other um, institutions around the area like Uni Norte and other places like that. So I'm really excited to be here today and to talk with you. And this is Miguel. He's just one Hi. of the many awesome teachers here at the BNC. Hi, my name is Miguel Mejia. I work here at the Centro Cultural Colombo Americano in Barranquilla. I've been a teacher for uh, quite a while. Thank you, Katie, for inviting me to join you. Thank it's you. a pleasure to work with you, really. Well, it's going to be great. OK. All right, so we're ready for the PowerPoint slides. All right, so for the next slide, um, we're going to start off with one of my favorites, which is um, the old agree or disagree warm up. They are always good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miguel. So um, either myself or Miguel, or uh, one of us is going to read a sentence, and um, we would like to hear from you out there on the World Wide Web whether you agree or disagree with our sentence, and of course, most of them are related to listening and speaking and using online tools. All right, so are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Let's go. Okay. All right, next slide. So the first statement is, I think teaching listening and speaking is really easy. So we would like to hear from you. Respond in the chat box. Do you agree or do you disagree? What do you think, Miguel? Do you agree or you disagree? Personally, it mm -hmm. depends on whether you have uh, the right tools okay. and content appropriate um, activities. Okay, right. I would say that's probably true. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard if you don't have the right tools, but it can also be a little bit easier if you have the right ones. Okay. All right, next slide, please. I love online learning tools and use them all the time in my classroom. Please so, tell us in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Do you agree or disagree? Is this true for you or is it not true? And when we see some responses, <laughs> <laughs> we heard from one of our friends, Juan Pacheco, he Disagrees. Disagrees. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Oh, I wonder why that is. I really, can't, Katie. Yeah, I don't know. He will change his mind after our webinar for sure. Oh, okay. Good. I, I think you're right. I think Mary might change her mind too. Okay. What about you, Miguel? Do, what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with well, this? Well, I personally like using them. Yeah? I, quote, I use them quite, some, uh, quite often, really. Well, that's good because you're leading the webinar, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. happy to hear that. Um, I love learning online tools. Um, using online tools as well, and I use them pretty often. Not every time of my class, but pretty often. All right, next slide, please. All right, here's another one. Um, do you agree or disagree? I can't use online tools ever because I never have an internet connection in my classroom. Hmm. What do you think? I agree sometimes that really? we have that drawback in our schools. Yeah, some schools have that drawback. Yep, if you don't have a connection, that can make it a little bit more difficult. But that's where we come in, Katie. Okay. How do we come in with that? <laughs> okay, we'll be providing a couple of activities you can do without okay. connection in okay. your classroom. We're gonna we're gonna give some ideas and strategies for that too. Sounds good. All right. Um, next slide. Ooh, and lots of agrees. Fantastic. We see lots of agrees out there. Okay. Okay. Next. I know where to find free online tools. Can you tell us, people, in our chat box? Do you agree or disagree? You know where to find online tools. Oh, I don't know, Katie. I bet many people are just going to say Google. 
You think Google, Google, you got it, you just Google free online tools and you're done? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. And we will probably show you a few of those online tools as well. Hopefully. We will, Katie. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for your responses. Let's go to the next slide. The next slide is, students are more motivated when they use online tools. Do you agree or disagree, everybody out there? Do you think students are more motivated when they use online tools? I personally can't think of a teenager who doesn't like the internet. You can't? No. You can't think of one single teenager no, who doesn't I like really the internet. No, I really can't. I can't. Hmm. Yeah, How I don't think you? I can think of anybody either. Yeah, what about little kids? Little kids too? Younger kids? I think they get involved on the net since their early years. So. Okay. And okay. adults too? Right. Okay. Next one. <laughs> And this, this webinar, webinar is, is going to be, be fun. fun. <laughs> Do you agree or disagree whether you think this webinar is going to be fun? <gasps> oh my gosh, I saw a lot of agrees. We're just going to say we're hoping that that's connected to this slide. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. yes, we actually think this is going to be a really fun time. We're looking forward to an interactive, um, engaging webinar. We want to share some of our ideas, but we really hope to hear some of your ideas as well. Yes, that's right. Hopefully, you will be you'll be getting some good strategies to use in your classes. That's the idea. All right. So next slide, please. All right. So um, these are our webinar objectives. So you participants out there will be reminded of some basic principles of teaching and learning, listening, and speaking skills. So we're going to just talk really quickly about some of the basic principles of a good listening and speaking learning environment. And then you're going to encounter many different tools, ideas, and activities for using free online tools to improve listening and speaking skills in the classroom. So we're hoping that those two things happen for you. And especially, we're hoping that you have a nice hour with us. We expect to have a nice hour and have fun with you. All right. All right, let's get started. Okay, so um, we, there are four main components of a really good listening and speaking instructional program. Um, can you think of any? Out okay, good. So these are the four. Um, we have meaning focused input, meaning focused output, language focused learning, and fluency development. Next slide. So the first one is about meaning-focused input. That means that what we give our students with receptive, uh, that they receive from us with their receptive skills, in this case listening skills, are focused on making meaning, understanding, and comprehending the input that they are receiving. What's I'm up? sorry, Katie. What does I plus one stand for? Uh, I think I'm in the wrong webinar, really. Really? Well, is you're this a math in, webinar? This is not a math webinar. You are in the right place, Miguel. I plus one is talking about um, input plus one, and that's called the input hypothesis, and that's by this guy in the picture that you can see. Who is that? Um, that is Stephen Krashen. He's a very famous ESOL expert, researcher, speaker, um, things like that. And he came up with this idea, which is a great idea if you ask me called the input hypothesis, which is the idea of taking a student from the place where they are, their level, and giving them something just challenging enough that it is challenging, but it is not frustrating for them. Sounds perfect. So you're taking them straight to the next level. Um, and we want to definitely focus, when we give our students things, um, listening activities or speaking activities um, that are just challenging enough, but not frustrating. That's the idea. Next slide, please. And then, so we want to give our students information that they can comprehend that is meaning-focused input. And then we want to ask them to give us meaning-focused output. So obviously, this is not a typo. I said this strand focuses on students producing meaningful. Meaningful, meaningful. <laughs> okay, people. Exactly. We want to focus on the 
meaning, okay, that they can use in the real world. So we want our students to do authentic tasks, right? Um, for example, like in the picture, you might ask your students to do some type of a like business presentation, um, proposing something that they would maybe propose in a work environment. That's a real authentic task. Can you think of any real authentic tasks that you would have your students do for speaking skills, Miguel? Um, we're going to be discussing a few, but h how about creating the, their own discussions? Very good. Yeah. Okay, with their own ideas. Yeah, they can have real world discussions about real topics that are interesting for them. And we're going to continue um, with the slides, but I would of course love to hear on and see on the chat box any other ideas that you guys have out there um, in webinar world for um, other authentic tasks that students could could um, could produce that would really show like meaning and. Um, something that they could do in the real world. All right, so we would love to hear your ideas. Please feel free to put those in the chat box. Thank you for your participation. Yes, thank you for your participation, absolutely. All righty, next slide. So we have to focus on meaning. We want definitely language has to be used for communication. Um, so exactly, someone just had the best question they possibly could have had, which is what about should we be focused on fluency or accuracy? Which of those should we be focused on? What? Let's talk about each one of those, and then um, I'll put my two cents in, and Miguel, maybe you can put your two cents in as well. Right. So, um, so then, so we have meaning-focused input and output, and those are, that's the most important. We always want language to be about communication, not repeat, not listen and repeat all the time, right? No, Katie, because it gets old pretty soon. <laughs> it gets old pretty soon. We don't want to have lots of listen and repeat. But we do need to focus on accuracy. We do need to show our students the right uh, grammar, the right pronunciation, vocabulary, punctuation, and spelling. Um, we need to ask them to practice those things. Um, we don't want them just to um, use language to barely communicate without it being accurate, something that they could truly use. Right. Um, so, and the next slide, please. And then we, of course, want them to get to fluency. Um, we, with fluency, we think about practice making perfect. So, we give our students lots of different ways, lots of meaningful, authentic ways to produce what they've learned um, based on the vocabulary and grammar skills that we've been teaching in our classroom that pertain to real life tasks. So, the question from a um, guest. From, yes, from one of the guests was, what do we focus on, fluency or accuracy? What do you think? I think there should be a balance, really. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, mm, you can have a bias towards any of the two. Yeah, I think it's easy to have a bias, depending on your teaching skills, for any of the two. I think, you know, as, as ESOL teachers, we know that we want to give our students the most comfortable environment so that they feel relaxed and like they can use the language that they have learned in a way that, you know, we don't want to be so strict that we're always, you know, but we do need to show them the correct tools. So I would say a good balance, 50-50 would be good on that too. Um, Someone has a nice activity, Katie. What, do you, what is it? It says a phone calls with native speakers of English in one authentic task. That's right. You can call me up and I will have a phone call conversation. That's a fantastic idea. Okay. And we have similar ideas later on in our presentation. Don't right. We? Yeah. Great idea. Invitado 706. Very nice. Giving them interesting topics. Um, Fanny Cax. That's also very good. All right. Next slide, please. All right, so of course, um, you know, students these days, Miguel, what do you think of students these days? Oh, I have plenty of thoughts, but this slide suggests that well, they are um, so connected to technology these days. Mm -hmm. They love it. They yeah. love it. You mm -hmm. can't deny it. You so can't deny why it. not use it to, to our advantage as instructors? That is a great point. We should definitely use it to our advantage. Can we go to the next slide? So these two concepts fit together, you know. Um, we have, we want to focus on real world tasks that pra have students practice listening, um, listening and speaking with fluency and accuracy, and we can use lots of different online tools for that. Yeah. 
One type of online tool is, a, is receptive, so those are like the listening exercises that we're going to be talking about in just a minute. Those can be done by individuals or by a single group of users, and that's of course when students receive the information from text, images, audio, or video. So that's one, and then the next slide. are the interactive ones, right? right? So that's when two or more users are interacting at the same time and students can speak to each other or to their teachers in real time or maybe they do a recording and they... Yeah, share it with others. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two types we're going to talk about. So let's go to the activities. Are you Activity ready for the activities? Katie, Katie Aper, you never were going to say it. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's well, go. now it's time. It's time. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to talk about a few activities, and then Miguel's going to talk about some, and then we're going to go back and forth like that. All right, so this is a beginning level activity. So this is, there's a um, website called On The Media. Have you heard of On The Media before? I have, but I haven't used it. To okay, be yeah. So it has a lot of audio files you can get online. Um, you can get long audio files about the news, or you can get short audio files about the news. Um, they are for native speakers or language learners alike, so they're not necessarily tailored for our students. But you can do different activities with these. One of them is to ask beginning level students a simple yes or no, either or question um, about a topic that you listen to. So let's say you find a file on or a listening a recording on, on the media. Um, you can have the students listen to it. And before they listen, you can just ask them a simple question like, was the story about the internet or newspapers? And then students are listening very carefully for those words, internet or newspapers, and they say, internet or newspapers, according to which one it was. What do you think? I think listening for just is always useful. We can't have enough of that kind yeah. of activity. Yeah. Right. And I think, too, you know, sometimes our students get frustrated. They've with listening to real world um, authentic things. But if we say, no, you don't have to listen to every detail, just find, listen for the main idea and you're already improving your listening skills, you know? Right. So that's my idea. All right, next one, please. Um, intermediate level activities. Um, so for students in the middle of their, uh, like maybe level B1 or B2, A2, B1, um, student activities, you, the teacher could maybe provide a list of true and false multiple choice questions for a listening activity. Um, and then as the students are listening, um, they write true or false. Maybe they listen many times. Another idea would be to have students create a headline for a story. And yes, um, Judith says that we need to give them lots of opportunities to practice real language in real situations, and I absolutely agree. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we will have to we will check out some some of these contexts where they can uh, practice, although in a virtual environment. Yeah, but it's real uh, reality. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, and as you can see, I have this podcast symbol here on the okay, slide. Okay, Katie, what is the Apple symbol doing there? Well, the Apple symbol is, I just wanted to remind everybody there, out there, and some of you, most of you probably know this, but some people might not. Did you know that, this is not a commercial for iTunes, <laughs> but did you know that even if you don't have a Mac, you can download iTunes for free on your computer? I I have iTunes on my okay, computer and I, ha I don't have a Mac. You don't have a Mac and I you have iTunes. I don't like on your I don't like Macs really. But I have iTunes in my computer. Well, okay, fine. Well, okay. anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So you can download iTunes, and there's something on this slide that says podcast. Do you know what that is? Yeah. What is that? A uh, podcast basically is a recorded broadcast of some kind of uh, media. Could be anything really. Um, like the news, like the news, or uh, TV show, something uh, about radio interview, radio interview, um, something about a certain topic that you might want to learn about, like science or something like this, yoga podcast you can and, find, uh -huh. yeah. And you have to pay for those podcasts, right? No, Katie. Most importantly, they uh -huh. are free. Exactly. You can find lots of free stuff 
on iTunes podcasts that are authentic listening activities for your students. You can download them at home and you can bring your computer to your class and then you can have a podcast ready for your students to listen to without having to be connected to the internet. Sounds great. And I like those a lot. Um, I agree that listening again and again is an effective scaffolding for students. And podcasts, when, once you download them, you can use them over and over in your in your class. So thank you, Invitado 706, 706. Okay, good. next slide. Yes, please. One more quick talk about leveled activities. Um, this one's for advanced level. So we had the just finding the gist. We've had true-false questions and creating a headline, and then adv some advanced level activities. Um, one could be to discuss um, how different news um, how different news programs show the news in different ways. Maybe how they are biased or how they're swayed. So you might want to listen to a news story from CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News, or the BBC, or something like this. Listen to that story and compare and contrast the ways that the news is represented or how different networks present it. I think that our context here um, and our reality nowadays calls for students who are critical consumers of the media. You better so, believe it. Mm -hmm. So that's why this could be really useful. Absolutely. Thanks, Vigo. Next slide. Okay, next slide, please. Aha, uh -huh. now we go to the expert on Voxapop. Okay, well, uh, Voxapop, guys, is an interactive and engaging website where you can create online discussions. Voxapop offers uh, for free, of course, then again, we should emphasize that. That's good, that. yeah, for free. free. Mm -hmm. It's basically a virtual environment for online discussions. Mm -hmm. Uh, we really like it because you can exploit your creativity and students can think of their own questions and discussions to share and interact with their partners. Great. It's very easy to use. You don't need too much tech, tech expertise. Oh, so I don't have to be an expert to no, use this? No, you don't, Katie. Okay, it's very that's easy good. to that's learn. Mm -hmm. no, no steep learning curve okay. for these activities Fantastic. we're going to suggest. Good. That. I can learn quickly. Good. Okay. So basically, uh, what you have to do uh, at Voxapop is to create um, a discussion group. OK, and can you go to the next slide to show that? Right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Yes, okay. we create a group. Mm -hmm. We create a group. That, this is basically what a Voxapop dashboard looks like. What you looks see there, good. yeah, <laughs> looks neat, right? Yeah, yeah. looks cool. Okay, those are people who participated in an online discussion. Uh huh. Uh, what else do, can you see in the dashboard, Katie? Um, I can see a little red circle that says record a message. What do I do with that little red circle? Okay, well, what you do there is that you record your voice. Okay. Okay, so why you would I do that? Uh, <laughs> okay, to follow the teacher's directions. Uh -huh. okay. To, okay. To join the discussion oh, cool. you propose as a teacher. Very cool. So. So first, the teacher's voice comes with a discussion idea, right? Mm -hmm, right. And then everybody can record Joins their them. voice with their own ideas for the discussion. Right. Cool. And okay, next slide, please. Okay, Katie, are you super creative? I'm so so creative. I feel pretty good about my creativity. When it comes to promoting discussions in class, sometimes I forget what I want to say. To okay, be so <laughs> yeah, if you feel in that position, okay, yeah, what am I going to have my students talk about? Right. Okay, so there is a source that we can't recommend enough, is the TSL Journal. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you see here on the screen is uh, okay, this is really like ten percent of the what you see in blue. That's guys, only ten percent of the topics. Yeah, that's. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of topics. Plenty of topics from beginner. Beginners uh, just is talking about their vacation, what they what they ate for dinner last night. Sure, up all to the more, way to all the way to more advanced discussions. Analyze the news. Yeah, <laughs> analyze the news, controversial topics, oh. and so forth. Okay, that sounds pretty great. All right, so I choose a topic, or I can make up my own, or I can find sources to put them at, to to choose from. Right. Right. Then I 
introduce the topic and my students can join in the conversation online. Right. And how much does it cost again? It's for free. Guys. It's free. It's free. That's awesome. Cool. Next slide, yeah? Okay. Thank you. Yes, we I think I think Miguel has some very interesting ways to promote <laughs> comprehensible input too. Okay. Thanks, Judith. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Judith. As an as an as an, an additional activity that you can use is that you can even have okay, uh, you can have your students respond to your to your post, to your discussion, but you can give them some follow up questions. So uh -huh. we can have ongoing conversation. That's so fantastic. interaction is not only uh, between teacher and student, but between students and students themselves. So it doesn't have to be so teacher led. The students no. even contribute to the conversation yeah. and elaborate and everything. I can think of a, of a project in which they have to create their own discussion. It's not you who follow the. That's who a lead, great idea. Who lead the, wow. The discussion, right? Great one. Excellent. Okay. Okie doke. Let's go to the next slide. So um, this will be shared on the slide share, um, and it will also be on my blog that you can see later. But we have just a lot of different websites for activities, and I wanted to put them here, and you can look at them later. So as you can see, on the Ready to Go side, we have ESL Lab, LiteracyNet.org, etc., where there are some ready-made um, listening activities for you. And on the other side, there are lots of listening activities um, that you can make on your own. Just similar ideas that we had for those beginners, intermediates, and advanced students. All right, thank you so much for saying it's nice and interesting. Um, and I saw a really nice uh, question earlier about students if they're not motivated um, to read or to listen, um, and some of well, actually, we kind of feel like some of these online tools can be pretty motivating for students, right? Sure. Uh, and Katie, they are also asking us if you can, uh, what is the if we can discussion do it in the done? Oh, done in the classroom or at home? Well, that, of course, depends on your resources, right? Right. Either yeah. way. Either mm -hmm. way. If you have a media lab at school, you can do it at school. Exactly. There you go. Yep. And, or at home. Why not? I think students would prefer to do it at home as they would have some chance to rehearse. <laughs> sure, they might feel a little nervous at first. Right, yeah. right. So if you wanted to do like a homework assignment where everyone had to respond online, you know, maybe um, your students could do that. And if they, but if you have the resources at your school to have them hook up online, then maybe you can do that too. Okay. Great question. All right, next slide, please. Yes, I agree. By recording themselves, the students will improve their productive skills. Absolutely. So this um, this next slide is just another another way to have students put uh, record their voices and put them online and respond to each other, um, just by digitally recording student speech. So you could have many of your students, I bet, have um, smartphones. I don't right. know if this is true or not. Do your students have smartphones? All of them. Yeah, mine, I'd say majority also. The majority. The majority yeah. have smartphones. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, so they can upload a video of themselves, um, maybe answering a discussion question or answering a topic that you, uh, re that you were talking about in class. And then they can upload those presentations onto YouTube. And for homework, they could. They could send videos um, to each other to respond to those things. So that's another way to use um, to use videos and audio to put that online. Next slide, please. Sounds good and engaging. Oh, thanks, Miguel. Next one, yeah. Um, another idea is to put uh, to bring into class an action-packed video clip um, and have students write and then share sentences about the clip with their partners and then as a class. Um, so you could bring in a video clip and have students write a script, and they could maybe even act it out, or they could just describe it, either one. Or you could even have the students make their own little video that they have to write a script for. That's a possibility, too. They could, and they could share them, they could laugh at each other and have a great time in class. Hey, like Katie, this. Mr. Yeah. Jesus Garcia has an interesting question, too. Okay. He's asking if you can use blogs to have a recording of every activity which is done. I think you probably can, don't you? Well, 
<laughs> you have a super nice blog, don't you? I have a, I have a nice blog. I'd say it's a nice blog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, another environment. And I have um I have a video on my blog that I that we made here at the Colombo, and I'll tell you guys about that a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, you can have like wikis. Wikis oh, are uh -huh. wikis are a great virtual environment where you can have this like a classroom, really. Another place to find a virtual classroom. Right. Awesome. All right, let's go to the next one. Thank you for all the nice feedback that we're seeing. Thank you, Esperanza, Esperanza from Choque. Uh, do you use songs in your classroom, Miguel? Not too, not too often, Katie. To be honest. Yeah. Do you guys use songs in your classroom out there? Why don't I you don't. Use songs, Miguel? I don't because I'm of a different generation from them. Okay. Oh, okay uh, I on. think I'm afraid my songs are gonna be dull. To them. They're going to be like, it's 2014, Mr. Mejia. Yeah. Don't do this okay, to us. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I, guess, I guess that can be a problem if you're not sure what they really like, something like this. So one idea would be to have your students bring songs into the classroom um, that they like, so they can bring um, their, their USB or their CD or whatever with a song, and they can show the class maybe some lyrics with the words taken out or they can talk about why they really like that song, something mm -hmm, like this. Mm -hmm. Making sure the song is in English because it's an English class. Right. But maybe that's a way that you don't have to worry about your, you know, generation gap. Thank you, Katie. That's a great <laughs> idea. All right. Uh, next one, please. Oh, thanks for the compliment about the blog. Here's another one. Community member talk. Okay. Um, you know, you can invite someone into your class. Right. Maybe a native speaker in your area. Maybe there's um, someone who works at your BNC who's a native English speaker. Feel free to send Katie Bain an airplane ticket. Okay, I'll take it. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> or if you don't quite have the money for an airplane ticket, you could also ask someone that you know to Skype into right. your classroom. Sure. Of course, that requires an internet connection, but. You can invite a friend or colleague to your class to speak about a certain topic, um, or you can ask them to, to Skype. And um, maybe your students could, pre um, could prepare questions that they want to ask that person. And then you could have a dialogue with, this, with that person, either, either over Skype or with, um, in person. And also, you could broadcast a TED Talk. Have you, got, have you heard of a TED Talk before? Yes, Miguel? Katie. And we'll be talking about them. They are super cool. Now everyone out there needs to say TED Talk five times fast. TED Talk, TED Talk, TED Talk, TED Talk. <laughs> Very TED good. Talk. Okay. They're awesome. We're going to be talking about them a little bit more. If you haven't watched your own TED uh, a TED Talk just for yourself, you should do that, even just for yourself. I've learned so much from watching those. Yeah, from just TED Talks, TED.com. You got it. All right. Next one, please. Okay, I'm going to talk about Voice of America. Do you guys like Voice of America out there? I personally really like Voice of America. Have you ever used Voice of America in your class? No, Miguel? I haven't, Katie. If you Google Voice of America, you're going to be able to find this wonderful website, or you can type in voanews.com. Can you go to the next slide? So also, um, Voice of America has a, a podcast that you can download for free. I subscribe to the podcast, and I get like four or five podcasts free a week that are delivered straight to my iTunes, and it's fantastic. Um, and we're getting so many people talking about the using songs in their classrooms. Excellent. Great. And definitely, Social Networks, S.M. Berdaxigar. Social networks um, like Edmodo, absolutely. That's another great tool that you thank can use. Thank you for your participation. Yeah, thank you so much for your suggestions out there. Um, so Voice of America, I suggest that you find their podcast, and I suggest that you subscribe to their podcast that is called As It Is. And they have really nice podcasts for students who are learning English. So it's a little bit slower than a normal news program, and usually the vocabulary is a little bit more limited, and so it's really nice. I've used them for listening workshops here at the Colombo several times, and most of the time my students seem to really like them, so I highly recommend that. Um, this is an activity that I do with my students. I'm going to try to explain the activity that I do. You can do this activity with any podcast that you 
want. But Voice of America is a nice one because, um, like I said, it's specifically for language learners. So first thing I usually do when I, when I give them um, a listening activity is I say, OK, here's the topic. The topic of this podcast is, for example, as you can see on the slide, health. health. Yeah. So can you tell me a few words that you expect to hear, Miguel, if I said the topic is health? Doctors. Doctors, good one. Uh, I don't know. Um, pain, pain, painful shots. Painful shots. Vaccinations. Maybe. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, diet, exercise, stress. You can see on the word, the, the map here, some of those ideas. Vegetables, maybe, would be a good one for that word, for health. So those students brainstorm a list of words. Can you go to the next slide? That's what you do first. <clears throat> then, while you are listening, the students, I always show them, you know, like an active listener. Like, you can't just sit back and just mm -hmm. slop around and yeah. you know, not really care. You have to really be an active listener. And so I tell the students, okay, we're going to listen to this several times, and I want you to put a check mark next to the words that are repeated. And I show them this. I put it on the board, and I show them these these words. So the words that we were expecting to hear, and then a few other words. We listen to this maybe three times. And every time the students are putting a check. So if they hear the word diet ten times, they're going to put a check ten times every time they hear the word diet. If they hear the word exercise, they're going to put a check seven times, let's say, if they hear exercise. If they hear doctor three times, they're going to check doctor three times. So as they're listening, they're listening for those words that are repeated because the words that are repeated are where you're going to find the main mm, idea. idea. Exactly. Right. So what, what, what proficiency level is this activity suitable for? That's a really good question. I would say usually I've done this with intermediate, intermediate. students and advanced students. Um, because a lot of times they haven't had a chance to really um, interact with authentic listening, and this is one way to do it um, with, inter uh, with uh, intermediate students. Um, okay, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Judy is supporting us by saying that it's very important to include technology in the classroom. Thank you. Thanks, Judith. Mm -hmm. And thank you for, for to Nata Arte as well, who is saying uh, she also agrees with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Their classes are more meaningful with technology help, Fanny Cass. Good. So I have them first write, brainstorm a list. Then they put check marks next to the repeated words. Finally, um, they write a summary. And they write a summary using the words that were repeated. So let's say the words exercise, diet, and doctor were repeated. I would say, OK, so what is this about? This is maybe about a doctor's advice to give to have a healthy diet and exercise a lot. Mm -hmm. So I would like for you to write one or two sentences using those three words to summarize what you heard in this Voice of America podcast. Summarizing what they just heard is mm -hmm. a challenging activity. Yep. And they will reinforce uh, they will reinforce their comprehension. It's always good. I think so. That's what I think about it. So for example, they might say, doctors say that to be healthy you should eat I don't know. A right. nice diet, a healthy diet, uh -huh. and exercise. Right. <laughs> all the time. Every day. Okay. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the next slide. Oh, well, this, this resource is really awesome. Is it? What is this? Reading Companion. A reading Companion. Mm -hmm. Well, well, guys, when it comes to practicing listening and reading, we can't recommend enough that you get your hands on this resource. It's called Reading Companion. It's a literacy program. A literacy program. Yes. Okay. It was developed by IBM. Not that we are advertising. We're not advertising. Okay. We're just saying. Okay. That's who, that's who did it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. This online resource consists of a very interactive program for reading, for pronunciation, and listening. Okay. So it's a listening, and you can use it even though it's called Reading Companion. You can use it for listening and pronunciation yes, too. Yes, of course, right. Cool. It's very much like a Moodle. Okay. It's another uh, virtual, another type of a virtual classroom. Another type of virtual classroom. Yeah. Cool. 
um, well, basically, students practice their listening skills, pronunciation, and reading by reading some mini audiobooks. Okay, cool. Some audiobooks. That audio sounds books. nice. Yeah, they, they are always cute. Uh, students listen as they read and as the software reads for them. It's actually there is a software that reads for them and they can practice reading and they are, they are reinforcing their pronunciation and intonation. It's, I think it's a fantastic idea for That's beginning great. levels. That is really great. And some people were, were saying earlier in the chat box that um, it's nice to have the words connected to the listening activities to have either the script or the book and so Reading Companion does that for you. That's really nice. Good. Yeah, uh, well to use Reading Companion... Can we go to the next slide? Yes, mm -hmm. thanks. How do you use Reading Companion? Well, again? you need to be enrolled at an educational institution. Okay, you have to be enrolled. Yeah, the institution Mm -hmm. manages an account okay and you as the instructor create your your account okay so the school has can get an account for free yeah and then I can get an account as a teacher at the school okay so if, if you're not sure if your school has an account maybe you need to speak with uh, with who? academic director something like this principal well, uh, at this time uh, the reading companion is managed by the BNCs at, in Colombia in Colombia uh -huh. Yes. So you might want to contact some of the BNCs. Yeah. So you might want to find out from the BNCs in your country or your area if you're able to get your hands on they this awesome software. They will graciously do it because they are promoting it. Awesome. Sounds right. good. So, and well, then teachers create an account. What you see here is a sample of a class. Here are my friends. Yeah, <laughs> lots of great top, lots of great. Bain and Katerina. Oh, yes. Okay. My name is on there. All right. My the Russian uh, doppelganger. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So you create you create a class and you assign some some books uh -huh. appropriate for the level of okay. course. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we have a look at the next slide, please? Okay. This is a sample of what a mini audio books book looks like. It looks cute. It's cute. Uh, the little panda bear you see there Aww. is your reader. Oh, that's nice. Okay, the panda bear or another character is a lizard. A right? lizard, a too. lizard cool. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they will read aloud for the student, and the student, uh, well, first you listen and read, of course, uh -huh. and then they get to read along. They they get to read, okay, read along, cool. and a software recognition program. Uh -huh. will evaluate how they are wow. pronouncing it. So they are going to be evaluated on their pronunciation and right. fluency. Right, fluency. Yeah. That is excellent. And, well, uh, basically all you need is, uh, well, the accounts, of course, and a computer and a headset. Okay. With Sounds a microphone. Good. And what about, what about if I, I mean, I like pandas, and I want, I want to read that story because it looks really cute, but what if I'm in the mood for something a little more... You know, advanced. Yeah, Are there it, other levels or no? Well, the, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. uh, the, the library of audiobooks is growing. Great. It's a program that is starting. And so far, they go up to high intermediate. So, Super. But, but the books are not lengthy, okay? Mm. The idea is that, uh, well, Fanny is asking, how can I get the software? Mm -hmm. You don't need any software. Uh, you Fanny, just need to you speak just with someone at your school and see if and ask um, an administrator at your school to see if you can um, get connected to that Yeah, software. in the past they need they needed a software installed in the computers, not anymore. So the, or the whole program was updated, mm -hmm. so everything you need is to uh, go and talk to your, yes. uh, to your administrators. administrators. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Go to the next slide, please. So yeah, I think our highest recommendation is just to ask and see what you can find um, as far as Reading Companion goes. But we, we really think it's a great program, lots of different levels, and um, yeah, just ask. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay, well, um, the next slide is showing you guys, it's like the banner or ESL video. Can you, can you see it? Have you, have you used it, Katie? I haven't used ESL video very often. Can you tell me about it? Uh, well, ESL, ESL video is another enjoyable online tool for improving listening. 
Oh, cool. It's a very popular site these days. Really? So yeah. So okay. I'm I'm out of the loop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> on this website, uh, students can practice watching video sketches from uh -huh. authentic sources like YouTube or Vimeo or Daily Motion, right? And then they check comprehension with a multiple choice listening quizzes. Okay. So can we have a look at the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay, what you see here are some listening quizzes for elementary. Okay, yeah. Elementary, mm -hmm. right. Uh, well, basically you, you just uh, browse in the video library, uh, video quiz that that suits your topic, of okay. course, uh -huh. your student's level, and then we can practice it uh, in a media lab or assign it as homework. Um, okay, can we have a look at the next slide, please? Looks good to me. Thank you. Ooh. This is what a ESL video quiz looks like. Okay, and this is some Charles Dickens, something about that author? Yeah, it's a, it's wow. a super nice uh, summarized biography. Okay. Okay, you just watch the video and you see to the right of the screen you have some comprehension questions. That's nice. When they are done, the software will uh, evaluate how you did. Very good. Uh huh. Yeah, and then from Jesus Garcia, he said another idea could be giving the link of, the, of a video and making comprehension questions about it. Yeah, great. I think he was reading our mind because we were we thinking the same thing. We are going there, day. right? Oh my goodness. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, and something very nice is that the ESL video quizzes are not only for basic students. Okay. They go from beginners up to uh, high intermediate. Next slide, please. Okay, here this is, is a sample. This is our talk conversation. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, this is a an, uh, video quiz. Someone developed it uh, based on a TED talk. On a TED talk. Yeah. Fantastic. It says, okay, I really liked this. this you did? Talk. Yeah. It's a nice TED talk. It's super cool. It was about a model. Oh, okay. And they entered the, it, she entered the stage wearing this, um, super sexy trendy clothes oh, and my. I was like what is this uh -huh. gonna tell me on a tech talk tech talks are, are supposed to be intellectual smart Why people showing up with all this the fashion? smart people and then <laughs> in five seconds she changed her clothes okay okay <laughs> and she wore this low key stuff and like this uh, sweater she's wearing in the in the picture there yeah that that yeah, that low key cardigan she's uh -huh. wearing okay and she conveyed she conveyed the meaning of her talk okay Looks are in everything. Looks so are in everything. Yeah, yeah. Very and I've cool seen topic some really good. Teenagers. Yeah, absolutely, really good topic for teenagers. I've seen some really good ones, even for teachers. You could do. You could use a TED talk in your class that has to do with education and have a nice discussion. Um, you know, in part of your professional development at your schools, that'd be a great idea. And TED talks have a huge range of topics, right? They really do. They really do. Okay. Um, can you tell we like TED talks? They're great. They're All great. Right. Okay. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, so here is a tip or two uh, for using your ESL videos. Well, you can just maximize the screen, and then you go over the, the comprehension questions okay, for so a they, bit of challenge. So you, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, browse before check check the quizzes you might want to use, and Katie. Teachers can become creative with uh, ESL video because you can customize your own quiz. Oh, you can make your own. You can, can you make post your it own. on ESL yeah, video? Right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, as long as they uh, respect copyright laws, uh, okay, everything sure. is cool. Cool. Very nice. Next one. All right. So this brings me to my next question, which is the idea of the fact that I don't always have a good internet connection in my classroom. So what am I supposed to do about that, Miguel? Well, this is a website I recently uh, bumped into. Okay. It, on accident. On accident. Okay. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was browsing because I wanted a song so badly and I couldn't download it anywhere. Right. Anywhere. It's not. It wasn't available anymore. Sure. And I just wanted to rip off the sound of a YouTube video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I wanted to do that, so okay. I figured it out. Okay. 
So <laughs> we have this cool uh, website. It's called Anything to MP3. Okay. Okay. And so, you can make your own listening activities from yes, this. Yes, right. Okay. okay. Um, can we have a look at the next slide, please? Okay. So this is what the That's anything, what the website looks like. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, so basically what the website does for you is that you spot um, an audio sh an audio program. Sure. Uh, it can be a video it or be a audio. Video, video. And it but will change it only to audio. Yes. Right. Basically okay. it works only for only with videos. But, oh, okay. But there is a range but there is a range um, a huge range of uh, video sure. video webs uh, video website uh, where, where, with your websites where you can get your right yeah you, you can, can use. so you can listen to some of those those stories that are online on ESL video that are on YouTube you can put the link for the YouTube video here from a book what uh -huh. it says paste link to a YouTube and video then it on turns SoundCloud. into an audio file that you have on your computer yes that and it's is ready awesome. to go that mm -hmm. is fantastic the whole process that's what I like best the yeah. whole process doesn't last more than five minutes five minutes oh my and goodness you, I'm gonna have get... to go download some Carlos Vives Carlos Vives as soon as I get home yeah okay <laughs> okay so yeah and you have your audio activity ready to go your audio file I mean sorry and of course, then out of it, you can create your own challenging listening activities. Yeah, you can make your own listening activities from any file like that. Can we go to the next slide? That's a great idea. I'm I'm feeling a lot better about using online tools now. Okay. Uh, well, these are some of the the websites that are supported uh, by anything to MP3. Mm -hmm. But you might want to go to the you might want to go to the website and check the list of supported um, supported okay. supported sites. Jesus hey, Garcia is asking us if it has a limit of size or time extension like can you can you download 45 minutes worth of an audio? I um, think not. I, I think it needs to be I, shorter than uh, that. I know, I think I think you might the process of convert converting uh -huh. the video the I mean the audio track to an MP3 will take longer uh, but it doesn't say anything about it. I haven't tried uh, I a mean, long one. Downloaded, downloading You've uh, done an episode, yeah. an episode or of a show or anything like songs that. Songs and um, audio files, um, Short, like, shorter like speaking because, text. Yes, because that's, that's okay. what I think suits my my, my needs sure. as an instructor. Okay. But you, yeah, go and try it and let us know. Yeah, that would be I, great. I'll try it too. Maybe we can download the the soundtrack to a whole movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good. And remember, it's just for uh, it changes it into an audio file. It doesn't change it into a video. File. No, it's only audio. All right. Next one. All right. So we've uh, talked a lot about where you can find um, online tools, online listening tools, um, or online video tools. Now. Um, Another idea that I have used a little bit is in making your own little movie. I made my own little movie. I'm okay. a director and a okay, producer. Okay, Katie. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there's a link on this slide um, for the library video that we did here at the Barranquilla BNC. Um, this is going to be on my blog and should be on the slide share as well. You can see it. it. What I did was just I took my personal, very small digital camera. And I recorded students talking about the benefits of the library that we have here at the Colombo and Barranquilla. Um, and each person had a little something that they had to practice saying. They had to repeat it many times mm -hmm. in order to rehearse and get their lines correct and all these kinds of things. And then, um, and then we, I, I put those. Um, I put those files together and made a movie out of it. I used my Mac and I used iMovie. Um, but you can also download free trials of software. Can you go to the next slide? Um, this is a place where you can download a free trial for um, maybe 30 days for the Adobe Movie Maker. Um, and so you can, you can try that and you can use the software. Um, this for me was my first experience making a movie with, the, with iMovie, which is for a Mac, and you might be able to um, use similar software, um, but
but it was pretty easy for me. Okay. I mean, yeah, I didn't have too many too many problems. It took it took me about two or three hours to make the movie myself, and it's only two minutes. It's not like a real movie. It's like two minutes. Well, Katie, sort of I have commercial. a question for you. Uh -huh. um, uh, do students get a little bit nervous, apprehensive yes. to, to record themselves Absolutely. on video? They were very nervous, but the end result was great. They felt incredibly proud of the end product, and because we posted it on Facebook and we put it on YouTube, and they felt good. And they also, I think, they really improved their pronunciation and their speaking skills um, as a result. So um, okay. I uh, mm -hmm. sorry no Katie, problem. to break your train of thought. Um, there is one question here, uh, once again, about the Reading Companion. Okay. Is, um, well, Do we need to answer a principal? Yeah. Uh -huh. Chances are your your school doesn't belong to a participant organization, mm -hmm. right? That's what we said. Yeah. But you can, maybe you can contact the Relos. Um, you yeah, know, you might, know, actually that might be a good question to, to, to email us about afterwards, and we can try to connect you, um, MMU guest. Yeah, can, for uh, example, uh, here at the Colombo, at the BNC Barranquilla, mm -hmm. we'll be gladly to help. Sure, yeah, we, you can email um, myself, and you'll see your, my email at the end there um, for any of those types of questions, and we can try to put you in touch with someone who could, um, could help you get access to the Reading Companion mm -hmm. program. But if you can't find access to the Reading Companion program, we definitely encourage you to, to check out some of the other resources and other activities that we, that we showed you, um, especially ESL video, um, which is actually pretty similar to Reading Companion, and you don't have to belong to any um, organization to, to take advantage of that. All right, um, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so we are actually finished with our ideas, right? Right, Katie. Mm -hmm. So we would like to hear from you now. We would love to hear from you. So um, this is an idea that we had. First of all, we we heard so many ideas in the chat box today, and um, thank you so much for those ideas. We'd love to hear any more ideas that you have in the chat box now. Or we thought, you know, why don't we make this a little more interactive? Um, if you would like to. Um, we would love to hear from you if you want to record um, an idea that you have used in your classroom for using online tools for improving speaking and listening. We would love to hear another idea from you, um, and you can email them to me. There's my email, and it's again on the last slide um, in just a minute. You can email that to me, and I can post it to my blog. What do you think? Sounds great, Katie. Sounds Are you going to send me a, a video? I will. Okay. <laughs> That I will I will over, overcome my shyness and oh, okay. I'll send you something. Thank okay. you. Yeah, and don't worry about it. it. You don't have to send anything. Even if you want to just email an activity that you've used in your classroom, we would be, be really happy to hear anything that you have um, um, for us. And we'd love to continue this discussion after today's webinar. Um, the next slide, please, is just a list of our sources. And then the final slide shows thank you yeah yeah the final slide um, shows our email address um, the Colombos here in Barranquilla's website we're very proud representatives of our binational center here in Barranquilla um, mm -hmm. and we thank you so much for all of you who are watching um, uh, out there in the World Wide Web it's just been so so wonderful to have you here to hear all of your ideas um, and your your participation and feedback has been great um, as you can see, the fourth one down there is my blog, elfellowkbane.wordpress.com. That has um, this presentation on it, mm -hmm. as well as a lot of other presentations that you can use, and you don't need to worry about stealing my ideas because it's fine with me, um, and you can use in your schools. Um, I have my, the video there, the library video that we did. Um, and, and then, of course, AmericanEnglish.state.gov is a wonderful resource for lots of learning and teaching tools. So, thank, thank you, you all for yeah. joining us. Thank, thank you, you so Katie, much. for thank inviting you, Miguel. me. You were awesome. Great you were job. Too. Great. Thanks. <laughs> um, any, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to post them here. Um, but thank you so much for all the kind words that we're seeing in the chat box. Um, we really we had a great time. I had a great time. I had a great time too. Yeah. Thank so, you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day.
Okay, bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>